Let's start off by taking a look at the impact global warming will have and is having on the oceans. As we read in the 2014 National Climate Assessment Report, quote, as human-induced emissions of carbon dioxide build up in the atmosphere, excess CO2 is dissolving into the oceans, where it reacts with seawater to form carbonic acid, lowering ocean pH levels, acidification, and threatening a number of marine ecosystems. The acidification of the oceans has already caused a suppression of carbonate ion concentrations that are critical for marine calcifying animals such as corals, zooplankton, and shellfish. Many of these animals form the foundation of the marine food web. Today, more than a billion people worldwide rely on food from the ocean as their primary source of protein. Ocean acidification puts this important resource at risk." End quote. And here we see photos from the report which compare a healthy shell in normal waters to an unhealthy shell in acidic waters, and the contrast is startling. In addition to carbon dioxide-induced ocean acidification, there's also the impact of oceanic temperature increases. As we read in The Diversity of Fishes, Biology, Evolution, and Ecology, quote, Reef-building corals generally exist in water close to their upper thermal limits. Increases of only a few degrees cause coral bleaching, loss of symbiotic algae, and death. Strong El Nino Southern Oscillation events in 1982 to 83 and 1998 killed 50 to 100 percent of the corals in many areas, often as a result of average temperature rises of no more than a degree. As the corals died, algae spread and covered all surfaces, followed by erosion and physical collapse of the limestone. These alterations to the basic underlying biological and physical structure of the reef have had far-reaching impacts on the fish assemblages. Where coral death exceeded 10%, more than 60% of fish species declined in abundance, with losses strongest among species that relied on live coral for food and shelter." End quote. And here we see an example of some bleached corals. Here's another, even more disturbing example. Notice the stark absence of the vibrant marine life that we're used to seeing around coral reefs. Coral bleaching is not something that's just going to happen in one or two little unlucky locations around the globe. As we read in Global Climate Change, quote, Coral bleaching, in conjunction with other factors, including the decrease in seawater pH, may cause irreparable damage to 40% of the reefs during the next few decades." End quote. Take a look at this map, which shows the projected frequency of coral bleaching events in the 2030s and 2050s. As we can see, by the 2050s, a huge percentage of coral reefs worldwide are going to undergo level 2 bleaching events during 90 to 100 percent of years. And the NOAA defines level 2 bleaching events on their website as follows. Quote, Alert level 2 heat stress indicates widespread coral bleaching and significant mortality. End quote. I truly do not understand how data like this doesn't instill in everybody that sees it a powerful desire to take drastic, immediate action to combat climate change. And here's something that I find extremely frustrating about climate change deniers. They'll constantly use the phrase climate change alarmism, yet data like this makes absolutely clear that very serious, global consequences of climate change will materialize in just a matter of decades. There is nothing irrational or silly about becoming alarmed at things that are extremely alarming. I'm on Patreon. There's a link in the description if you'd like to support my content. I would really appreciate it. Uh, there's also social media links in there if you want to follow me there. I'm trying to build up some of those followings. I would really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe for more videos if you haven't already. Hit the bell, hit the like button, post a fucking comment. All that fun stuff that's standard on YouTube. You know the fucking drill. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this.